and so I kept the way we were. I just go. And um, it used to be uh, I had white ones and black ones, and then uh, anyway. Long story short, uh, this looks very different than when I first bought it, like 25 uh, years ago or so. And so, but there's this guy in uh, LA that uh, gradually worked on them over the years. And anytime I had something done to change the guitar, he would do it to all four of them. And then um, he was from, uh, well, he still is from, he's from Japan, and uh, but he lives in LA and uh, he's, uh, I don't know, I don't want to generalize, but you know, there, there are some Japanese craftsmen that are, I don't know how to put it, they're kind of finicky about what they do, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You know, they're real specific, and um, they're very careful. And uh, anyway, he used to uh, listen to, uh, he used to have, the, I finally figured out after about five or 10 years, he used to have a classical radio station on. It took me five or 10 years to figure it out in his, uh, workspace, but it was at such a low volume that it would take you five or ten years to notice that it was on. <laughs> so that's what I mean by that he was kind of a finicky guy. Like it was just this quiet history in the station. And, um, and this guitar was uh, too heavy because it had lots of uh, modern paint on it, basically, that doesn't crack. And the old kind of more toxic paint cracks and it allows the moisture to leave the wood. And the old guitars like that, when they become light and weight and they sound better as they get older because the, all the water that leaves through the toxic cracks. <laughs> but this more modern heavy metal 1980s paint was stronger. <laughs> and it wouldn't crack, and it held onto all the water from the rainforest inside the guitar. <laughs> so I said, I asked my friend if he could make it lighter, and he thought about it very quietly for a few minutes, and he said, I have a friend in Japan with a smoker, and I will take your guitars to Japan, to my friend, and we will smoke the guitar. <laughs> and it will be lighter. <laughs> and he did. He took the guitars all the way to Japan. He had some family business there. <clears throat> he went there, and he came back. And uh, so this is, that's my little anecdote. It's about this uh, guitar that um, doesn't look like uh, it used to many years ago. But it's kind of funny that it has this, uh, I just have the one knob on there because I have to sleep the one knob. And I have to you know, see. There's one song that does. I used to be able to do that too. See, so it goes. Uh, Jose Jones! This is about another roommate in the same building underneath the uh, ex con, I guess is what it was. Um, but he was an actual roommate. And, uh, but I, didn't, I thought I, I didn't have a roommate because he, did, he showed up about two months after the period had begun. It was a university situation, is what I'm trying to say. And he showed up. And, so this is about him. Jose Jones told me alone his story. He had friends like Paco, Pico Piedras, La Muñeca. He receives on his set, crack, crack, crackity Jones. <laughs> Jones, crack, crack, craggedy Jones, crack, crack, craggedy Jones, crack, crack, craggedy Jones, crack, crack, craggedy Jones. Please forgive me, Jose Jones. You need these walls for your own. I'm moving out of this old Padre. I'm afraid you'll cut me, boy. Thirty miles by hundred 
miles by stinking island. Por bufear en cruz en automóvil. Chasing voices he receives in his head. Thanks for proving that I had a good time. Thanks so much for your friend Martin and I was going to have a good time. See you next time. Thank you.